All right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And a busy month of September, a lot of drinking. And our first event ever with Ruth Chris Steakhouse here in Fort Lauderdale. And, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the steakhouse. To me, it's something I can do at home on my grill. But uh, the main difference between one steakhouse and the next is service. And I have to say, the guys at Ruth Chris always do a great job. And on this evening... Uh, another excellent night, and we had about 50 people in the room. You know, Cake Bread always manages to bring out the crowds, and, um, you know, these wines are always dependable. They've been around since 73, Jack and Dolores. Cake Bread drove up there, and he was working for Ansel Adams at that time and fell in love with this piece of property, and they did the deal on a piece of uh, a notebook paper uh, by hand, handwritten, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. These guys have become one of the most successful wineries in the Napa Valley. And, you know, there's no secret to success. These guys are real hardworking guys. Bruce and Dennis, the next generation now, taking over the family business. And we've done many events through the years with these guys. They're great guys. And like I said, hardworking guys still out there on the street working hard, selling the wine and making the wine. And, um, you know, uh, uh, this is the most important part of the wine business to me, pouring it down the consumer's throats. You know, you've been there, you've done that, you've seen cake bread, you've tasted the wines. But the best setting to do it is with some great food, you know. The steak, I said, the steakhouse is not rocket science, man. You know, you, you put a nice, high-quality piece of product on the plate and, um, you know, we don't have to do anything fancy to it. One of the things I love about Ruth Chris is they put butter on the plate with a steak. There is nothing like when they were serving the dinner course at the restaurant the other night and just they were walking by with these plates of filet bignons with the sizzling butter on them. The room just smelled incredible and uh, a no-brainer with Cabernet Sauvignon. We started out with a Sauvignon Blanc and the Sauvignon Blanc is a really crisp, you know, style Napa, not very overly herbaceous and green. Some nice white grapefruit, citrus, a little green melon, a hint of fresh earth and mineral highlights. They're really refreshing, leaves the tongue salivating for food. Some green fig notes in there as well um, and really nice with the um, Semen Carpaccio. Um, a big hit, 2012, a very good vintage in Napa Valley. 2011, a difficult year, but this is where producers like Cake Bread really shine. Their 2011 Chardonnay, just delicious. And, uh, you know, partially stainless, partially treated in oak. This wine uh, it has got a lot of bright um, citrus fruit to it, green apple, and um, really nice and clean on the finish. And uh, they served this with a, um, a salad course, which um, uh, salad's kind of difficult to pair with wine, but the wine had a lovely acidity and, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, 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 it was just a beefsteak tomato with some mozzarella, some fresh mozzarella, a little balsamic, then drizzled over it. So not a lot of vinegar on there, but a really nice Chardonnay. That's their bread and butter wine. They harvest the grapes at night to keep in that fresh fruit. And, um, you know, the 2011, a difficult year, as I said before, but this is an excellent example of Napa Valley Chardonnay. The Pinot Noir is up next, and this was a new wine from Cake Bread Cellars, and uh, this is all estate fruit from their new vineyard up in Anderson Valley, and... Um, well, it'll be called Two Creeks in the future. I guess they just renamed the vineyard. Anyways, this wine's got a lovely, pretty spice to it. One of the things we love about Pinot Noir, some black raspberry fruits. And, uh, you know, not overdone, though. A lot of Pinot Noirs can be sweet. This wine still had a nice freshness and savoriness to the finish and a lovely spice. It was really excellent with the spicy lobster dish they did. They kind of looked like uh, fried shrimp pieces. I guess it was just small lobster, a little spice to it, but really went nice with the Pinot Noir. And then the Cabernet Sauvignon 2009, an outstanding vintage in Napa Valley. Really ripe and voluptuous wines. This wine showing that dark currant and cassis berry fruit with a nice touch of toasty oak spice, fresh plowed earth, and tobacco notes. A lot of ripe berry fruit on the palate and uh, nice ripe and round tannins as well. This wine's got excellent structure, will definitely last for uh, five to ten years in your cellar. But these 2009s are drinking very nicely right now. And uh, just a wonderful pairing with the filet mignon without the caramelized onions. You know, the caramelized onions were great with the filet, but a little bit sweet for the Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, But a nice combination nonetheless. That's what we had to drink with our friends at Ruth Chris Steakhouse and Cake Bread Vineyards. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.